Hello everyone, Warrior Angel here and welcome back to Empire Total War. Yes, I've started to be a bit of a glutton for punishment with this particular game, but I have to admit, since I started doing the Let's Plays for this channel, I've really started to enjoy it more. I'm still not a fan of some of the stuff, like it is a big change of pace for me to have to have the whole gun line and shoot them rather than try and charge into melee. That's just me, I'm personally a fan of the whole sword and axe methods rather than shooting people. But that's just me, anyway. But no, I've enjoyed a lot of the game plays. I enjoyed the campaigns I did of United Provinces both times around. And so I decided I'm going to come back and do it again. But there have been a couple of slight changes before. As you can see on the front here, for example, I'm using Darth Mod. Now, a lot of YouTubers, a lot of players who've played the game, including my brother Lord of War, as said, Darth Mod, you have to tr do it. It gives you all this stuff. Use it. Play it. You know, you can't play Empire Total War without using Darth Mod. It's that good a, a mod for the game. So I thought I'll give it a go. And there's also another reason why I decided to give Darth Mod a go, but uh, you can probably guess by now, but if not, I'll explain why in a little bit. And the other thing I'm doing as well is that I'm using a sub-mod, I believe it's pronounced Cassius Belly or something like that. I don't know it's Latin, I think it means Belly the Cow, I, I don't know, I'm, I never studied Latin. You know, we never had that in my um, public school, well, it's pri yeah, pri public school here in the UK, which is sort of the state schools. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing a Latin course just to see some of the stuff, it'd be handy for any of my uh, Let's Plays in the future involving the Romans, but anyway, that's going off topic. But what the mod, sub mod does is, you can, it has a whole bunch of custom units, all the, a lot of the minor factions, including the one I'm playing as, as you can probably guess from the video title. So, yeah, that's why I've included that. You'll find links for everyone down in the video description, and there's also going to be a link to Lionheart's video he did on how to install Darth Mod. I found it quite useful. It's pretty si simple, but it's, uh, you know, if you get stuck, it's a good video to follow. So that's my recommendation. And before I actually carry on into the gameplay, there is one thing I did want to bring up. And if you've been following my Attila narrative let's play, you know, the Tale of Two Cities, yes, I know I didn't release my normal episode on Friday last week. It's because of the fact that my university's been so busy with me this week, I haven't had time to finish editing. Even now, recording this video, I still have a bit of editing left to do, but i got a lot more free time this week, so I'll be able to get it done, and it'll be out this Friday, as usual, and we'll just carry on from there. I'd rather thought it'd be best to do that, and actually keep a good quality of it, rather than just try and rush it over the weekend, especially trying to mix in school, you know, university assignments and that as well. So anyway, that's all my Nato and that done with. We're going to go to the Grand Campaign. And in case you're curious to know why I'm able to play with all these, despite having Darth Mod, I'm using the custom campaign on Darth Mod, which unlocks basically all the factions. This is relative, it still follows the standard Darth Mod rules, etc. But it allows you to have all the different factions. So you can play as the Barbary States, you can even play as the Pirates if you really wish to. You can see they've got one small colony over here in America. And that from you to expand. I think one or two people have actually. Oh, actually. Oh no, they have another region somewhere. I just can't see a little green dot anywhere on the map for it. But anyway, so yeah, you can use all these different ones. And I'll just. You can go for all of them all. And the reason why I wanted to use the custom one rather than follow the basic Darth Mod campaign is simply because I love these small little factions. As you can see, a lot of these are unplayable. But I love playing as a small faction and been able to build them up so you can basically have taken over the world all right so yeah that's why I wanted to do it so as you can see we've got all these different ones you can play as you can play as pretty much the custom one allows you to play as all the different ones on the map no matter who you want and all of a sudden I got a little bit of lag then but we're gonna be doing this as the Knights of St. John now that's what this is the main reason why I actually picked Darth Mod, because of the fact that it allows me to be able to play as them. And I just like the idea of the thing. For anyone who isn't familiar with the Knights of St. John, I a basic quick um, history lesson. I'm not going to be any expert on this, so any, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But the Knights of St. John actually started as the Hospitals Order. You know, the you may remember them if you follow any of the Crusades games, they're the ones which not, I believe they had like this white symbol was in black and it had a white background. And yeah, 
they were basically that them. They were involved in the fir the first few crusades, and they had basically they were moved around to become an order military order then for protecting the Holy Lands. They had an off sort of stationed at Rhodes, and I believe the Ottomans pushed them out until so they were given land in Malta by Spain, which is where you get now the Knights of St. John and why they start off in Malta instead. So, yeah, it's, there's no video playable, you know, nation description to explain it, but you can always look them up, you know, just type in Knights of St. John, and I believe that to an extent they're still around today, if I, in a different name than that. I could be wrong. You know, I say, I'm just trying to remember this off the top of my head from the little bit of reading I've done. They look like a really interesting faction, and yeah, I thought it'd be a bit different. So we're going to go for a long campaign anyway, and we have to capture and hold 20 regions within 99 years. We've got two turns a year, if I believe it is, so we've got power 200 turns to do this. And we have to capture Malta, Tripolitana, Tunis, Algiers, Egypt, Syria, Sardinia, Naples, Palestine, Anatolia, Corsica, Morocco, Moria, Greece, and Romelia. So we don't have any actual expansion required in America or India, but I might try and go out there just because why not, eh? But our main st enemy is pretty much we have to capture America, Africa, and as well as deal a little bit with the Ottomans Empire, the Barbary States, Morocco, and go into Greece a little bit as well. So it's going to be an interesting campaign. So anyway, let's get this going. You may have noticed as well, by the way, the sound is music is a bit low. I believe there's some issues with. I've been told, gathered from watching other YouTubers playing Darth Maul, there's some issues with some of the music. But sometimes, so I'm hoping that sometimes the music being on low should hopefully get way out of that. But it might be that you might have find that it bits cuts out and that sort of. There might be adverts being played. I, like I said, I never don't don't do this for money, so I don't have my videos monetized. But if any vi adverts come up, that's why. Anyway, here we are on the Grand Campaign map. As you can see, this is our place, Malta. One small little island off the coast of Sicily. A few people actually complained apparently. They felt that Sicily here should have actually belonged, uh, had its own, you know, uh, forts and that on, like its own towns were having in, be a part of Naples, which I believe is the capital of it, this whole stretch. Anyway, so yeah, we start off in Malta, one little island. Thing. We already got some basic stuff up. We got a nice little summer money to begin with, and we got some basic troops. We got a body in the guard here, and we don't have real options. We are forced to expand pretty early on in the game. So what I'm actually going to do first things first. I'm going to build a military governors, and I'm going to build some bit cobbled roads. This just helps with a bit with the infrastructure. Plus four per turn. The town wealth in the region improves my ca campaign movement from there to there. So not really much, but it helps a bit of getting more money. I'd rather try and rely on my cities and that, but getting the money coming in rather than relying on trade. But the thing is, with starting as the Knights of St. John, you do have this slight problem. We don't actually have a ship, a, any ability to trade. As you can see, at the moment, we've got a shipyard. So we can get military buildings, but we can't actually trade with anyone. Now, one thing I remember being told about, is it this one? No. Building browser, this is it. One thing, apparently the Knights of St. John get this unique... I think, is it? I think they get a rather unique one, which apparently does... Or it might be one of the other mods I'm thinking of, but they get this sort of one which allows them then to be able to get both trade coming through and have it. It's like a hybrid of a shipyard and a trade port thing, so, but I don't know. I could be wrong. I just thought, I thought it might have come up with something there, but it obviously hasn't. Uh, I might only get one or the other then. I know one of the mods out there, if you because there are numerous mods for the Knights of St. John you can download and play. But, so yeah, there are some. Oh, Grand Harbour, this is it. Yeah, when, so this is it. You can. It hasn't got a name <laughs> for called a Grand Harbour because it hasn't come up for some reason, but it's Grand Harbour. So as you can see, it, increases, it allows me to have trade and it also allows me a whole bunch of ships I can get. Four fish lines, galleries, fifth weights, sixth weights. Probably not as much as what we can hear. In fact, Admiral Flagship, third weight, first weight. So yes, the dry steam dock will still be better, but anyway. So yeah, we don't have much option for buildings. We can only get the walls and the military governors, which I'm going for straight away. 
And as you can see, it allows me access into line infantry. And we've got a couple of units here as well, which are interesting. Order Militia Cavalry. We've got Militia Diordine. If I <laughs> excuse any of my pronunciation, I, I don't really know how to say it otherwise. And we've got some cavalry and stuff like that. So that's some interesting troops. We'll go into those in just a second. We've got my army are here. So what I'm going to do is... You ha most players have a few options when they want to do as Malta. You can des destroy the docks and then build them up as a trade port, right? Which means you're going to have to rely on the fact you're not going to have much in the way of a navy, and you have to be careful what you've got. What are you going to do? What I can going to do, which is I'm going to put them in here, and I'm going to start recruiting a couple of units. Not too many, because obviously I'm going to have to. Wa I don't have much in the way of e resources at the moment. I don't I ever have the money. But I can at least make sure that I get some units coming in. So I'm going to get a fifth rate there. Then so I can build up the army a bit better. My navy a bit better. Got two sixth rates at the moment and a brig. So having a fifth rate will come in quite handy. And let's see. We've got the buildings going. Uh, we've got This is our troops. We start off with the basic ones that they get. With the militia, a unit of pikemen, and my general's bodyguard. But these are the two The units, as you can see, are quite unique. We've got... It doesn't come up with any background, unfortunately, though. I'm going to have to look into this. Apparently, it should do. But this is the Militia de Ordin, which you see, they're not too bad. They've got slightly higher accuracy compared to the Militia. They've got ammunition and stuff like that. But these are mainly skirmishers. So what I'll do, I'm going to get... I'll pay for two units of these for the moment. Let's get the Order Militia Cavalry. Oh, here we go. Some of them will actually come out. I believe these are more, you can use them in melee, as you see, they've got a reasonable charge bonus, defense and that. But those are used pretty well for close range fire support. They're quite more accurate, they've got quite a reasonable reloading speed. And that's, and yeah. And then finally then we've got the Order Cavalry itself. As you can see, these are quite beastly. High level defense, high charge bonus, high melee attack, but no weapons and that. And they're quite expensive to run, so we're going to have to deal with that shortly. But hopefully after this is built up, I can actually get line infantry as well, which would be pretty useful. Okay, next stop is objectives. As you can see, these are my objectives. I have to basically take over all of Africa, work my way up here, and in a way, you can argue I'm weak, weak making the Roman, em the Byzantine Empire, the Roman em Eastern Roman Empire, because look at that. It's all... Obviously, there's like a, a difference here because I think the Western Romans and Attila own this bit of land. Oh no, they don't. Yeah, they do. To start with, and then the Eastern Romans own this bit. As you can see, they've. Uh, I basically have to capture all the Eastern Roman lands. Interesting. And so I've got fifteen. Fifteen of these regions I have to hold, and I have to hold a grand total of twenty. We should be able to pull that off. Prestige, we're pretty low down in terms of things. But anyway, let's move on. So this is thing. As you can see, we're absolute monarchy. Catholicism it is our state religion. We're moderate and meagre at the moment, that's not surprising. But and we've got things like policies. I'm gonna just keep this the taxes as they are, not really worse, too much about that at the moment. And this is the bit I need to sort out is my <laughs> cabinet on there. As you can see, my Ramon, the first, is my monarch, and he is really not that good. In fact, look at that. Okay, he's got a full taste of thing, but it increases his happiness and the nobility in this. But if you look, check him out in terms of his things as a monarch, he actually decreases my prestige and diplomatic... Got some in my throat then. Diplomatic relations. Very annoying. Okay, so but unfortunately I'm stuck with a guy. I can't promote anyone else over him, at least for the moment. Can I maybe... No, I can't move him. Uh, sorry, let's come back here a second and sort this out. But let's check out everyone else, because I'm going to be moving a couple of these around to try and make things better for me. My head is Giamaco Scarpa. And he's not too bad. As you can see, increases management and stuff like that. And he actually sort of counteracts the diplomatic relations problem a little bit. But he's not too bad. This guy is amazing. Look at that. Thing. He's, I think this is pretty much the best treasury manager you can get in the whole game. I mean, look at it. His trades plus two management, plus two management, plus... He gets plus six mischief trades. Giving him in the position, he just helps so much. I mean, look at that. Plus 12 per turn to the town wealth, and so you get more, quite a bit of money each turn. 6% bonus of global tax income and everything. That's amazing. 
Uh, we got here this guy. I'm not too fussed about. I might move him around somewhere else. This guy is absolutely shite. I'm gonna get rid of him. And this guy's pretty good, but as you can see, he's better as an army administrator. So we're gonna move him over there. That will increase that a bit. We're gonna have a look now for some of these stuff just so we can see if there's anyone we can swap around instead. Uh, what, what are you good at? Plus one of management, you're good at treasury and justice. So you would be better off than him in that position. You're older 43, but that'd be okay. You can last for a little while. So we'll stick him there. Let me see. Plus one of management, treasury. You're about the same. I wanted to have so I was do any of these are pretty good. Nah, that's not one really that good. I was hoping to have someone who might be pretty good as a although. He's got four stars. He's got four already. Let's just move him there. Yeah, he's a bit young as well, so he should hopefully last a bit longer. But there we go. We're, hopefully now we're going to be a little bit better off in terms of things. My things are going to be a little bit cheaper now, and up cheaper for that as well. Not too much, but he can only be, get better as we go along. He's pretty good there. He's going to be amazing. He's pretty all right. I'm pretty happy with all this, truth be told. fact, if I pop back on here quickly, uh, let me see, recruitment, if I cancel these now and rebuild them, I can get them a little bit cheaper because of me changing the stuff around. Likewise with the Navy, if I just get weird, I think I only say like 1% with the Navy, but every little bit helps, doesn't it? Anyway, that's everything for the turn. So let me just end it. Unfortunately though, the first few turns with Malta is pretty slow and boring. Well, I wouldn't say slow thing, I'm going to go through them very quickly. But it just means I'm going to have to build up the army ready to try and take on other factions thing. Because my main enemy at the moment... Oh, I didn't show you the diplomatic status. But the main enemy at the moment is the Barbary States. Well, luckily though, despite the fact that the Barbary States are allied or client states of the Ottomans, we're not actually a war with the Ottomans, we're just a war with the Barbary states. So that's really one of the best places to try and expand to. I mean, it's a gift in thing, especially... Oh, crap, I forgot to move these. Um, I've actually got the slight advantage here. My the general is not as good as theirs, but... I do have a couple of high firepower troops. This balance bar is slightly in my favor. Do I want to start this episode with a proper naval battle? Yeah, let's do it. Tell you what, as you can see, I've still got all my <laughs> United Provinces saves. So let's just save that. I'll tell you what, let's risk it. I do have a slight advantage with regards to the number of ships, but the enemy has got quite overwhelming firepower on a couple of theirs, so that's something I have to bear in mind. But if I can capture them, I'll be good. <laughs> so let's just give it a go and see. To catch an enemy's entire army is better to destroy it. To take intact a regiment. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so here, where are my ships? Here they are. What I'll try and do, I think, is if I can put. Uh, what have we got? Two six weights and a brig. I'll put them into two different groups, and hopefully I can try and get the enemy in the middle, and so they can be shot out between the two enemy guns. So let's just put you guys. Okay, you guys are on one side and you guys on the other, right. Okay, if we get you guys sailing down there, you guys can sail down there. Uh, can we put you all to four masts? Okay, you guys can slightly scoot over to that side. You guys slightly more that way. It looks like they're going to try and get it so they go broadside to me, so I'm going to be advancing to their guns. Okay, let's continue again. You guys go this way. You guys start making slightly more that way. Come on, guys, you should be able to do this a lot better off and thing. Right. Okay, pausing in one second. We'll put it into slow motion. 
pause it one sec. Let's just double check this. This is the Admiral ship, fifth rate ship with 101 men. These, 8 out of 28. So these are actually taking some casualties somewhere, if you're looking at it. I wonder why that's the case. But in any case, I, well, we should hopefully work out some advantage. We can try and desolate some of the troops a little bit, so we can actually see about capturing some of them. I wouldn't mind getting that extra flagship, for example, the fifth way to one. So I need to get you guys, you coming over here more to help out. And you guys just need to start getting yourselves involved in the battle itself. So let's tell you to come this way instead. Uh, anyway. So, let's carry on. I don't know, man. You're supposed to be sailing into with the wind behind you, and yet you're taking your sweet ass time getting over to them. Why? I ain't reading now. Why? That's supposed to be the direction the wind's coming from, and too, isn't it? All right. Forty-seven, fifty-nine. Well, I might take a risk out. In fact, is if I tell you guys to board. Go after that Zibak. You guys go after this one. And you two come after that as well. Quick, but now that's floundering in the wind, we can hopefully get a couple of broadsides going across as well. Okay, we're taking a bit of a hit just now, but should be fine. Still got 69 men, perfect. Let's move you around. Let's try and put you straight through the middle if possible. Oh no, we can take both sides on each flank. You continue on your path that way. You head that way and you head that way. Okay, let's move you slightly more inward so you can... Actually, that would do quite nicely. Come on, you should be able to get over there pretty quick. Let's see, you guys head this way, you guys head this way. Okay, you guys turn around. Okay, I'm actually going to do this a little bit faster just because I want to get this done a bit quicker. So you guys can come this way now. Okay, you started to attack them yet? Come on, it should not be this difficult to board a ship, should it not? Uh, I miss the days when you could just wham them as you can in a... T in a tiller and worm too. Okay, these guys have surrendered. Excellent news. Okay, you guys come after here next. Fact, can we capture can we attack this? No, we can't we just okay. okay, head out right now. You can come this side, you can come that side. And this one's finally boarded. Have we? Or we're just sailing around it again. Oh, they've surrendered. Okay, this is a pretty good thing for me so far, then. Okay, where are you going? Okay, let's just fast forward this one more time. My ships are now hunting this uh, Barbary's one down. Increase sales, man. I'm wondering if this one's actually going to try and retreat off the map, or he's actually... Oh, he's actually coming around. Okay, you guys come this way, you guys head this way, and you come this way as well. 
Okay, you got 59 out of 55, 59 men. We've got more than enough troops to be able to board them if we wish. And so, let's just battle the uh, thing to shit. <laughs> Alright, let's take over a little bit. Reload your guns, man. You, come after it. God, it's taking a long time for its guns to reload. Okay, let's move you slightly around so we can actually take shots of the enemy, please. You move forward, increase your sails. Oh, decisive victory. There we go. Okay, now a bad battle for my first go, and I actually managed to win a naval battle. Yes! <laughs> okay, let's just see what the situation's going to be like. So we've got one captured ship. Which one is this? The fifth weight. Oh, that's not bad. Thing. In fact, um, I could sell it for 1,150. I'll add it to the fleet, in fact. Oh, that's what happened. Right. I forgot it, that with an empire, you've got the whole interception thing. I forgot all about that. I'm not used to that <laughs> thing. I, I'm used to zona controls, Attila, or, you know, be able to just w walk past enemies straight away because the zona control is very tiny on a, a Medieval 2 map. I forgot all about the interception. Anyway, let's have a quick look at this. Now, the second turn. We've got United Provinces in Spain that have broke out in war. That was pretty quick compared to my Let's Play. Prussia and Poland, Lithuania. Um, that I really have to look into this. In fact, anyone who's using Cassie's Belly or Darth Mod, can you let me know if there's a way to sort this out? Because I would love to have it if there was a video thing for the units so rather than just do it that. Add my. Admiral was done pretty good in battle. Okay, cool. Let's just check out the Navy then quickly. Um, I'll keep the fifth weight, and then what I'll do, I'm building up now, and then what I'll do is I'll see if I get maybe one of the light galleries or something, so that I have a little bit of maneuverability. But let's have a quick look at uh, repairing these. It's going to cost me 828. That's fine, we'll do that now. Uh, okay, once that's done, we'll get two... Oh, since I've got the money available now, I'll get two units of order cavalry. I just like having my cavalry, what can I say? Okay, and then four more turns. Okay, this is what we needed to look at, was diplomacy. Now, like I said, because I don't have a trade port at the moment, I can't trade with any of the, anyone. So a lot of the money I'm going to have to be careful of, and I'm so glad I've got that guy who's such a good treasurer. But we're also at war with the Barbary States. For the Barbary States are actually a protectorate of the Ottoman Empire. They would, I think in real life, they used them for raiding and keeping everyone on the defensive. Thing and be careful of their ships. So luckily we don't start a war with the Ottomans, just with the Barbary states, but something to keep in mind. We are very friendly with things like the Italian states, um, who else? Genoa, which is... Where is Genoa? <laughs> Genoa must be some... Ah, uh, I can't even see where it is. Uh, I can't see it. Anyway. But yeah, we're friendly with them. We're friendly with New Spain over in there. The reason why is because Spain was the ones that gave the Knights of St. John Malta as a protectorate sort of thing. We're not actually a protectorate of them, we're our own people, but the Spain were the ones who gave them Malta, so we're pretty friendly with them on the whole. We're also friendly with Venice as well, and yeah, friendly with Portugal, very friendendly with Spain, we're friendly with Austria as well. The thing is though, it's despite my best attempts, I couldn't really get any alliances with any of these. See, I can't lull about often the money, and at the moment, money is very important for the Knights of St. John. We can't afford to give off state gifts and everything until we start getting a bit more income in. So that's just something we have to go in for a bear. There is a couple of options you can do with stuff like I could send my ships, for example, out to raid the trade routes. But that's just going to get Great Britain and the Ottomans pissed off at me. And as a small little country, you know, island state, you're going to have to pick your enemies wisely. So if you can, so that's so don't go raiding cities. 
As for where to expand to, I mean, like I said, the Barbary states along the African coast are your most natural choice to go for, especially since, well, you have to capture them as part of your mission objectives. But the problem is they're not really that wealthy. I mean, uh, take Tunis. Now, Tunis would be the main one I would probably go capture to begin with. Oops, I don't know what happened there. I'm trying to zoom in. As you can see, it's quite a large region capital compared to, say, Algiers over here, which is a quite small one. But, on the other hand, it hasn't really got much. We've got an iron mine field there, one farm here, a meager yield, and I think that's it. There's not, as a town, I think that it develops somewhere around there. There it is, the village here. But I mean, you have to wait quite a while for it. So, people, of course, have got different options. And if you have any advice, feel free to do so. I've been told that, obviously, Barbary States would be the main one to go for, but... I have heard a few suggestions to go actually against some of the allies here. For example, if I go for over here, Genoa, they, they've got access to towns and that here. And uh, Savoy, for example, they get... So if you come up here and you just take out, for example, Venice, Savoy, and I think in Genoa, as well as maybe go for Rome as well, the Italian states. But as long as you leave Spain alone, you have access to so different much stuff. You've got, for example, town multiple towns and that if you go for the italian states here in italy thing so you can build these up into schools because that's the other problem at the moment we actually have no research being able to do at the moment because we don't have any schools so yeah so many different options but my first short-term objective is to take turnus just because that's the better one of the better ones on the african coast and then i can maybe see about going towards algiers because i do think they got a couple of things as well like uh mine Another iron minefield here, which actually does a little bit of average yield, an average yield farm, and so on and so forth. But again, it's, I mean, plus it's such a wide area, and you have to keep an eye on for. So anyway, it's just something to bear in mind. Anyway, uh, I'm blabbering a bit now. Let me see, is there anything else I need? No. Let's just end the turn once more. I think the first couple of turns it is just going to be me going through, picking out the next new unit, and just do it that way. I would rather do that and you know, bit by bit, make sure I have the money available and be able to expand on it rather than spend all my money on troops straight away and find out why in the end, oh crap, I don't have much money left. Okay, pirates, when you ready? There we go. Okay, what have we got now? Austria and Poland have declared war. Mafia Confederacy in Portugal have declared war. I've now got fifth weight and my other unit, Melenza de Ordin. And you've got a mistress. That naughty monarch of mine. <laughs> that increases happiness, so I suppose I shouldn't complain too much. Okay, what am I... I'll get... Do I want to go for... These guys aren't as good in a melee as the Order Cavalry, but they do have the guns, which are pretty useful. Um... I'll buy one unit of them. I'll test them out and see what they're like. And uh, Navy. So what do we have in the Navy again? Just to double check, we got a 5th weight, a 5th weight, 6th weight, 6th weight, 5th weight, and a brig. Okay, so we've got a few things. So I'll just get, say, two little light galleries as well. Uh, yeah, I can't increase the thing. Okay, let's just end the turn once more. Like I said, these, like I said, you have to do a lot of short terms uh, turns for this, just so you can get the army up, so you can actually see about where to attack. And you also have to pray that, for example, the Ottomans don't declare war on you. One, obviously in there as well, you can declare, like one of the advantages with Darth Maud is that you can do late and early campaigns. So I believe you can play as the United States, for example, in a late campaign compared to, and be able to overthrow British rule and all that. Whereas at the moment, you've still got all the independent ones like Louisiana and that. Anyway, a couple of words have been done. That's okay. I was going to increase the amount of money I make slowly but surely. Got some more troops built. And what's this? Demetrio B Biano it has got a secret policeman, increases my chance of spawning assassins, decreases and wakes, but decreases me. 
That's not too bad, apart from the fact that I don't actually have anywhere to build them up yet. Again, I would have to. I'm going to try and take over Tunis, and then let me know what you think I should do, guys. Because I'd always love getting advice from you all. Yeah, and you know, I'm always. I'm, as you may or may not gather, I'm always happy to credit you if I follow it. So, what do you think I should do? I'm. I'm definitely going to go after Tunis because I need to as part of my mission objectives anyway. But, should I come up here and see about taking out Venice, and Gen or one of these small ones, or even go for the Rome itself? So I have access to all this different stuff. Obviously, I'm going to leave Spain alone. And I don't want to declare war on them just yet. Thing, But, yeah, if I can go after Rome, uh, Genoa, Venice and that, that will give me such a large number of things like schools and that. And a really useful start. But my mission objective, obviously, is to try and capture the African coast. So it might be best to try to focus on the Barbary states and eliminate them as a faction before I go elsewhere. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. And I'll think about it myself until the next episode and see what to do in then. So just double check. I've got two more units. Yeah. And after, in two turns, I get the military governor's barracks built up so I can get line infantry. And I should be in a reasonably position then to be able to take over Tunis then in the future. So, I'm making sure, just double check my income. What the hell? My income's dropped. Uh, like, apparently, I'm going to lose. Oh, hang on. Income next to minus 43. Oh my god, I was looking at that thinking, how the hell am I going to lose 2,715 in one go? <laughs> no, it's I'm going to be losing 43 now per turn. So, I'm going to have to be careful. I don't get too much money, you know, spend too much money. On upkeep, otherwise I'm not going to be able to afford anything later on. So let's just do this. I mean, looking at, basing it off my own playing experience, and that I do like to have a quite big, like reasonable size, like four units of cavalry, just so I can charge them into things, deal with artillery placements, and that sort of thing. But line infantry has got to be the main thing, obviously, you need. But if I can get anything like swordsmen in that, just be able to charge them in, that would be useful. Oh, by the way, as well, guys, thank you very much for I hope you guys have been enjoying the Call of Warhammer hot seat I've been taking part in. There's been quite, uh, quite a few views in that, so I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Oh. But I need royal air as well. Fair dues. I'll we'll check that out in a second. And like I've always said, feel free to comment and give me any advice and tips and that. Just bear with that series. That I'll be two episodes in front. So I think turn three or I'll be released. I've already got to publish soon. Once I'm waiting for one or two other players to upload their ones and publish it. But then, uh, obviously, then our mine should be up by that point, or right, probably about now, in fact. And then, so I'll be on turn five now, so just bear that in mind of any advice, okay? Um, let me see. Back to this now quickly. Okay. All my units of militia cavalry, just so I can see what they are like. And then, hopefully, like I said, I'll be able to get access then to line infantry next turn. So let's just end the turn once more. I do have a slight thing though, is that obviously my t individual wealth is going to be building up in each turn. Like at the moment it is 2,622. Whereas in the next turn I think I get 12 from the treasurer, plus 4 from the other guy, and then the finally then my governor's thing should be up, built up then as well. So I should hopefully get some money from there. So we're going to have a look see how much money it gets up to in a minute. Oh, but, and something else as well, if you're interested, thing, to, something to look out forward to next week, I think he said, is, although I'll remind people in my next episode for this as well, if you're happy, if you're enjoying narrative let's plays, and you enjoy Empire to the War, check out officially Devin's page, because he's going to be doing a narrative let's play, I believe, on the United Provinces, my, the original faction I played as, and hopefully he'll do a lot better than I did, so just keep an eye out for his one, alright? Thing. It should be coming out next, not this Saturday, as in, in f five days from now, but a week Saturday, so no, uh, ten days, no, twelve days from now. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, well, Palace. I could build this up, and what does that give me access to? Experienced Order, Infantry, Militia, Militia Cavalry, Order General Knight's Bodyguard, and Line Infantry I should already get, and that. 
Thing is, I haven't got the money. I'd rather save the money because uh, I'm gonna have to try and get other units first. So, in fact, let's get some. What have I got at the moment? Two skirmishes, two militia. I'll get three units of line infantry ready. Let me see about you. You get plus one to treasury, and you get minus five percent chance of death at the end of the turn. Minus one morale to battles. Okay. And I'll tell you what, I'll get four units. Uh, how much do these cost per turn? 230 though, but quite reasonably expensive. I'm already making a loss of 745 per turn, so I'm not going to be able to last too long. I'll tell you what, I'll just get two then. And then next turn I'll take them over to Tunis so I can actually maybe start sorting things out a bit. Next thing I have to decide as well is what am I going to do with the ports? At the moment that's the ship that's the actual shipyard, so that's going to give me a lot of military buildings. But on the other hand, they do one of the things you need to do is get a trade port so I can start trading with the other factions. I'm debating whether or not to I think I'll allow Malta to remain as it is as a shipyard and then have Tunis turn into a trading port so I can actually get trade from the iron and that there, so we'll do that when I capture it. Um, oh, you've gone up plus two as a strategist. Let me check you out. Tocotto Colombo. Let me double check he is. Oh, wow, look at that. But now, he's really good as an army guy. Look at that. Minus eight percent recruitment cost, My, you know, and upkeep cost. He is really good. Let me just double check some of the other guys, though, because I want to see if I can maybe get rid of... What about you? Plus one management, plus two. Uh, you're better than him. I'll tell you what, you can swap over and join, take over there. Can't see anyone else who's good with storeholder. Treasury, treasury. Okay, and, f oh good, he's upgraded as well. As you can see, I'm now getting plus two to diplomatic relations. Minus ten from him, plus twelve there, so I get plus two. That's good. Okay, two and I'm starting again. Two thousand six hundred twenty-two. Okay, so what? Let me check. I've got all my line infantry now. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to just take the whole army. One of the main things I'm going to have to do is make sure Malta does have a strong, you know, uh, garrison. I don't want the, if I lose that, then I lose the game. So I want to make sure they last. Okay, so let's just do this quickly before I end my episode. We'll put you guys into the boats. This is a weird way of doing it, but... Okay, I should. Let me see, if I put you guys Navy... Let's get you guys to come over here. Oh, I can't block it. They already got ships in port, so I can't block it. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's just pop you over here. You guys can come back and blockade it. I'm not too worried about them if they try to attack. Let me just have a look. They've only got... Three ships, uh, three six waiters. I'm pretty happy with uh, those odds if they try to attack. Uh, where the hell are my army just gone? I thought I'd just drop them off. I just thought, told you guys to drop them off, didn't I? There. There we go. Okay, you guys can come up there and to attack next time. You guys can come back here and blockade it. Good. Okay, let's just end the turn one more time just so I can get things sorted out. Um, I wouldn't mind getting some more infantry just in case, but I don't want to do. I'd rather use the money I get so I can repair Turnus after the capture. So let's end the turn once more. Plus, I should be able to get a little bit of money just from the fact that I'm going to be knocking down the shipyard back in Tunis back to being a port so I can get into a trade in that thing so I should get some money from that I should have some money then from the stuff for that I'll be getting I'll make sure to get trade and that pretty quick but this is all stuff I'm gonna be doing in the next turn in my next episode in fact oh Christ I haven't been paying attention to the time it's actually nearly been on this episode's been on for nearly three quarters of an hour whoops Oh, somehow they managed to escape my blockade. How oh, dare they. Oh wow, they want me to pay them money, but they want a peace treaty. 
And I'll tell you what, I'll counter offer, I'll go for a peace treaty if you become a protector which of mine. Let's consider a peace treaty. Allah still wants me to pay money. I'll tell you what, I'm still going to cancel that. Have you got any technology I can take? No. You can give me Tunis. If you want peace so much, I'll you give me Tunis. My lord will shower his praise upon me for rejecting your proposal was unworthy. Well, I gave them the choice, didn't I? I did. Agent R has been discovered. Okay. Let's just get up here to attack. Uh, they've got a pretty good thing. They've got some melee infantry, some desert warriors, some Orta, um, some armed populace, general's bodyguard, and some mortars. Okay, let's just obviously, I'm going to be nice here. Demand you surrender. They refuse it. Okay, so we're going to be finding this out in the next turn. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, any tips, any advice, or just want to tell me that you're enjoying the campment, the video episodes, because I love. Always, it's always great to hear as a YouTuber that you guys are enjoying it, and please make a comment. And if you want to be kept up to date with new episodes of this series or any of my other series, then please subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching, guys, and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.